Hey, welcome to the Unconditional Love Blog Topic 20. Mike Burris here. We've gone through a lot of blogs here. They, one develops after the other. Forgiveness is our witness and the essence of the gospel, which is the Logos message of the truth. There's a whole thing on the Logos message. Uh, look for that. That's on the end, uh, bottom of every page is a site map. So now we're going to dive into this, try to get this a little straightened for you. Our only real evangelistic witness, Jesus says, is uh, that much fruit, is that much fruit, Jesus talks about, that glorifies my Father to wholly, definitively, already be my be his disciples, right, is what? It shows or demonstrates or proves that we indeed are abiding, it's the word meadow, remaining connected in the vine of Jesus, right? That is related to the new man that you already have put on, right? You have already put on. This is talking to Christians, right? Like fresh clean clothes, right? Never before used clean clothes, is now beyond all these previous things to wholly definitively put on like brand new clothes, right? All these other things. What is it? This unconditional love, which is the bond of perfect unity. So love is the key, <laughs> Certainly our much fruit is related to the singular fruit of the Spirit that ongoingly is defined as or exists as unconditional love. So our fruit has, definitely has something to do with the singular fruit of the Spirit. I'm going to just update that. Certainly this is our labor of love unconditional love that Paul talks about. Certainly it is your unconditional love toward all the saints that Paul even heard of in his travels, right? He heard about this in his travels. So this is what it is. The Lord mentally sees to perceive or know your works. He said this, the Lord mentally sees to perceive or know your works. He said this to a church, your service of unconditional love. And coupled to this, patient endurance of trusting, relying faith. So it turns out faith and love, we saw, are the only two officially decreed commandments in the New Testament, the New Covenant. So this is a big, complicated paragraph. Our only real evangelistic witness is unconditional love. That's what he says. We saw that in the previous. Right? Our only real evangelistic witness is unconditional love. Which is the much fruit that glorifies my Father, to wholly, definitively, already be His disciples. This is, this, is, this is the fruit of discipleship. And it shows or demonstrates or proves that we indeed are connected in the vine of Jesus. That is, right, what is that? That is related to the new man that you have already put on, like fresh, never before used clean, clean clothes. It's related, right? This unconditional love. This unconditional love is directly related, no kidding, It is related to those clean clothes. That's what it is. That the new man has already put on. 
which it which is now beyond all previous things he was talking to wholly put on like brand new clothes it's this unconditional love which is the bond of perfect unity yeah that's that's what bonds us together unconditional love so certainly our much fruit is related to the singular fruit of the spirit which is unconditional love so it's it's a lot of verses talk about this fruit. After all, it is Christ's completely different in kind, superior new covenant. As we discussed in the last blog, the law of Christ to bear one another's burdens. The only New Testament, new Testament commandment given to saved people. That's an entele. It's a Greek word. It's the only entele commandment given to saved people. Jesus came to save the world, absolutely, in fact, not to judge or even condemn us, thus giving us the example, right, to learn from by a yoke of discipleship connection. A yoke, he said, to learn from, right, to learn from by his yoke. It's his yoke. To walk in the same ways in which he walked. And in context of routinely, unconditionally loving one's brethren, all right, to ongoingly mental abide or remain in the light. And we know Jesus is the light. We want to abide, abide in the vine, who is Christ. We know this is who the light is Christ. This is how we abide in the light, to abide in Christ. So you want to look at a vision about abiding in Christ. This is part of the loosing or untying that we saw about forgiveness in the previous blogs, where the Pharisees and scribes of the law were only good at, okay, whereas, okay, the Pharisees and the, subs, and the scribes, that's the Bible student experts of the law, were only good at, binding or tying up heavy burdens hard to bear and laying them on people's shoulders but they themselves were not willing to move them that is untie or loose them with their finger you see so we're not supposed to be like them and they were legalists they were the pharisees and scribes of the law ultimate legalists we don't want to be legalists. So look at the previous blogs. The forgiveness of sins is actually the essence of the preached gospel logos message of Christ. That is the logos message of Christ. And his disciples as witnesses of these things. Through the Great Commission, they faithfully preached under a completely different and kind superior new covenant based on the blood of Jesus all right it's a new covenant based on the blood of Jesus not their actions just as John the Baptist prepared the way for this right by his preaching of salvation only this leads to deliverance from captivity reconciliation between people restoration to wholeness of health right which is the definition of salvation which only comes from Christ it was one of the keys of the kingdom of heaven right given to his disciples to build my church on this massive foundational Petra rock of Christ not the little chipped off stone of Petros Peter that whatever you bind or tie on earth, right, whatever you bind or tie on earth, shall be bound or tied in heaven. And coupled to this, whatever you loose or untie on earth shall be loosed or untied in heaven. This is part of that forgiveness. Because in context, this is clearly speaking of forgiving your brethren that sins against you. 
So this is, he's saying, don't do what the Pharisees says. Don't do this whole binding and tying thing. Is this, is this the gospel logos message that we re represent by our lives as witnesses of these things? That, you know, they witnessed a lot of things in Jesus' life. Are we using this key to the kingdom of heaven? Right? Are we using this key? Appropriately, really. We shouldn't be doing it like the Pharisees, right? We shouldn't be doing it like the Pharisees, the legalists. Our forgiveness of others can actually lead them closer to Christ to ultimately receive their complete forgiveness. How does this happen? We are praying for grace instead of wanting the justice of law, returning kindness and goodness for persecution, and returning blessing for cursing. This will heap burning coals on their heads. Too many Christians think this means making them feel flushed with shame for treating us so badly. Right? That's what they believe. That's just because they don't know the idiom. But this guilt is actually the pointing finger of the law and Satan. Jesus would never view this as being kind. This is a lack of cultural understanding. Actually, in their culture, hot coal, coals right, for your fire would be needed for cooking and as a source of light at night and heat on cold nights, even to keep them alive. If you had to carry hot coals... You would not carry them by hand as the heat would rush onto the hand and arm. For this reason, people carried them safely on their heads in a pottery urn. And they had a big towel on their head. Thus, a kind or good person would give coals to their neighbor who was lacking on a cold night, right? This is truly a witness of unconditional love. <clears throat> so that's what it was referring to. Forgiveness of sins is actually the essence of Christ's model for prayer in bringing God's kingdom and God's will on earth as it is in heaven. It is 23 to 38 percent depending <coughs> of what prayer model you look at. And in Matthew's account, Jesus immediately adds verses 15 and 16 of chapter 6 to teach more about it about forgiveness mark 11 24 and 25 links forgiveness to answered prayer this is not a side issue but at the core of how god's kingdom comes and his will is done on earth as it is in heaven it's a core and directly coupled by the use of kai to impossibly possibility not being led or brought into the result of testing or trying to prove our genuineness. Right? It's what keeps us. Our forgiveness keeps us from being having to be tested. And in Matthew's account, but deliver us or save us from singular evil ones. Satan is the accuser of the brethren we need to be saved from him. We don't want any part of him. We don't want to be accusing. And he's the one that points the finger of the law to accuse us. Revelations 12.10. Revelation singular 12.10. A key heavenly part of our salvation from the definition above is to be delivered. Yeah, you can see that definition in one of the notes above. It's a long definition. Anyway, is to de be delivered from the captivity or slavery of the law that Satan uses to accuse us. And so 97.4% uh, of the Old Testament would never be preached or taught in the New Testament church. Go look at that. Several, several links on that. That is because the law empowers sin since it arouses sin and it multiplies it multiplies it for where there is no law there is no transgression for sin is not counted where there is no law 
all rules-based religions of the world, like the Old Testament law, are based on these weak and worthless elementary, rudimental, ABC fundamental principles. It's called Stokian. Stokion. Yeah, Stokion. That Christ, that through Christ, we're supposed to have died to. That we were supposed to have died to. Even if the rest of the Old Testament, which is 2.6%, consists of prophetic Stokion do doctrines of Christ, that is, elementary teachings, to help convert Jews to Christ, it is still, it is still milk for babies compared to the solid food discernment of the Holy Spirit. That's what it says. Forgiveness does not deny, suppress, or sublimate, or deflect the evil of others. It doesn't sweep it under the rug as the world deals with it. Just as we shouldn't with our own sin, we shouldn't sweep it under the rug. If we want to walk in the light of Christ. No, it brings it into the light of Jesus for examination to reveal the truth of it. It totally surrenders to the Lord by confessing that sin to Jesus, by agreeing with God's assessment of our sin and its due penalty. We are not faithful, but Jesus is faithful to forgive us our sins. How? Because he is also just, just to cleanse us from all our unrighteousness, right? And that word unrighteousness also means unjust. How? That is the message of the truth. Christ, right? One man's obedience, by one man's obedience, the many will be made righteous. By one man's obedience. How has this happened? We are justified or made or declared righteous by God's unconditional loving favor of grace as a grace gift. That means given it to us by grace. Through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God put forward as a propitiation through the realizing channel of trusting, relying faith. In by or with his blood towards reaching demonstrable proof of his righteousness. Through the realizing channel of the forgiveness of sins that were, with ongoing effects, previously transpired. See, these things occurred before. Right? Jesus is a merciful and coupled, faithful high priest in the service of God to make propitiation for the sins of the people. How? He, okay, he is defined as the propitiation of our sins. And, but not for ours only, but also for the sins of the world. Now, propitiation is a big word. It just means transference of our unrighteousness to him and his righteousness to us. This is the gospel logos message of God's unconditional love. This is defined as unconditional love. This is what it says. This is what is defined as unconditional love. Absolutely, in fact... Not that we have unconditionally loved with ongoing, ongoing effects. God, that would be the Old Testament law, right? That's what the Old Testament law said, right? That's what the Old Testament law prescribes, that we should love God, right? With all our heart, mind, soul, and strength. That's what the Old Testament law commands. But that he already unconditionally loved us. That's what... And specifically, by already having sent his son, a propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so already unconditionally loved us, and also, right, so also, it's really, and also, we are indebted to ongoingly, unconditionally love one another. See? Because of what God's done. If he's done this, so also, right, and also, we are indebted to unconditionally love one another. There are two Greek New Testament nouns 
right? Helasterion and Helasmos, and one verb, Helaskamai, that speak of divine propitiation or atonement. That is an exchange of our unrighteousness for Christ's righteousness, righteousness by the death and resurrection of Jesus that brings us the indwelling, enabling power of the Holy Spirit that makes us belong to him, right? That's what it does. It makes us belong to him as completely different in kind of, in kind, new creations during our saving water baptism. Repentance by confession is our, confession of our sins, is our obedience of faith. And our confession of the faith, right? Repentance by confession is our obedience of faith. So you can go look at all these great links. By this propitiation, forgiveness of sins, right? We are not condemned with the rest of the world. Likewise, by throwing away the books of the law through our forgiveness, right, that teaches an eye for an eye judgment of sin, right? That's what the books of the law teach, right? That's what it does. We throw these books away through our forg our forgiveness, which this law teaches eye for eye judgment of sin and the keeping of records, right, of inward, foul, rotten, malicious evil against others, right? And ourselves, right? It's keeping records of wrong. That's what it's doing. That then, right? Then we not, okay? That's what it teaches us through forgiveness, to throw away the books. When we do that, right, when we do that, that's where, what is happening, when we do this, then we not only become free from the yoke of slavery to the law and have ena enabling power to rebuke the accusations of Satan and his demon lawyers, in authority or name of Jesus as part of the greater works, right? That the one routinely having trust in faith in me shall actually be made to do, right? He says these are part of the greater works that the ones routinely having trusting relying faith should probably underline that, in me shall actually be made to do, right? It's, that's what we're, then we are, we, we not only become free from the yoke of slavery to law, but we have enabling power right, to rebuke the accusations of Satan and his demon lawyers. And this is part of, right, in the name of Jesus, which is part of the greater works that we are going to be doing. This is how to deal with Satan's accusations and the guilt we and others feel from sin. And when Satan brings it back up, we can again take it back to Christ's cross, cross for cleansing. To rebuke those demons, just as Jesus did, for repeated freedom. We can continue to have repeated freedom and healing. Salvation as a restoration to wholeness is not an event, but a process. This is what it means to submit yourselves to God or surrender control. And then, right, be able to relatedly see one thing's after another. And then... Relatedly, it's very relatedly, resist, stand against the devil, so he will flee from us. This is what it says in James 4, 7. 
This is our Matthew 6.13 Lord's Prayer for God's kingdom come, right? Enabling power and glory. Impossibility not being led or brought into the result of testing or trying to prove our genuineness. But instead, wholly definitively snatched or drawn up out from or rescued or delivered from the evil one. We don't want anything to do, right? Right? We pray, right? This is what we pray to have nothing to do with Satan or his ways of accusation. This is what he does, right? We don't want anything to do with it. Right? So we pray to be protected from him. And we're really praying for protection from him and his testing trials. That's what we're really, we're praying for a hedge of protection. We don't want any trials or persecutions to test us. We want him. We don't want anything to do with him. As Christian musicians, here's our reflection. Do we want to represent the Old Testament law of just, equitable, fair judgment, an eye for an eye, tooth for tooth, or the New Testament unconditional loving favor of grace through trusting, relying faith in Christ to satisfy the law's just judgment against us? We, we want grace. <laughs> And we want Christ to satisfy the law's just judgment against us. That's what we want. We can't mix law and grace. We still have one or the other. We will have one or the other for us. Right? One or the other. Right? If we want the law for others to punish them for their record of wrongs, right, that we have kept against them, we want that. Then we get the law applied to us as well. It's all or nothing, as the New Testament says over and over and over. But if we want grace, then we are rightfully indebted to give grace to others. Unconditional love, that's our indebtedness, right? We talked about this in other um, blogs, this indebtedness to love. To give grace to others. Unconditional love is what really distinguishes us as a disciple of Christ. For forgiveness is central to the new covenant, great news, gospel, logos, message of God. This is the word of God. right? This is the message. That's, that's what logos means, of God. The great commission, the Lord's prayer, it's part of it all. Uh, the Lord's prayer, the Lord's prayer. And the much fruit, quote unquote, of that actual disciples glorify their father with. The much fruit of actual disciples that glorifies the father. It is the singular fruit, essence, or nature of Christ living on us as the Holy Spirit, overflowing from us to others. It is our only true witness, right? It, it's, it's a witness it's our true witness. It's our true evangelistic witness. It's a witness that can bring grace instead of law to people for their salvation. Right? It's how we dwell in the light and the, in the truth that is Jesus. Thus, this unconditional love in action is key to the kingdom of God coming and God's will being done on earth as it is in heaven. It's central to the binding and loosing that we often hear about in the New Testament. It is the only New Testament commandment, entole commandment, right? Entole, which is an officially decreed, universally binding commandment given to saved people. The process of restoration to wholeness and health that is integral to salvation involves our reconciliation with God and people. We cannot separate any of this. 
sin, shame, and guilt aren't denied, suppressed, sublimated, or deflected as the world tries to do, right? That's what they try to do. Christians aren't to treat symptoms. No, we forgive or throw away the entire law, right? That's what we do. We throw away the books, right? Books of the law of justice, right? Of fairness and justice. That's what it is. We throw it away against ourselves and others at the cross, nailing it to the cross through total surrender by repentance, confession, and water baptism to Christ's, we throw it away, right? Throw it away. We throw it away. Thrown away to Christ's blood redeeming justice, right? Thrown away to Christ's blood redeeming justice, to cleanse us from all unrighteousness so he can be faithful to keep his promise to forgive us. Justice is served, right? Justice is served only at the cross. That's what it is. Yes, we can lose this forgiveness on ourselves and even on those who sin against us. That's what we're called to do. And this is a my prayer. Lord, thank you for fulfilling the law perfectly. You said you would do it before heaven and earth passed away. So that we can be free from its judgment against us. When we, t we are tempted to do Satan's work of holding others to the justice of the law, right? The fairness and justice. Remind us of your great, unconditional, loving favor of grace shown to us. And that if we want this for us, we are indebted to give this to others. Right? Give this to others. Remind us to bless those who curse us, to give kindness and goodness in place of evil, and to intercede for those, right, for others, so that they will be led away from law to grace. For your kingdom to come for them as well as for us. Amen. Well, I look forward to your comments, what the Lord has shown you about this, insights, something you read, something the Lord has shown you, prophetic rhema. And put that down here. This is how we encourage one another today. It says each of you bring a teaching. And then make sure to like this video. And, and, and also uh, subscribe to the channel so you know what's coming up, right? So you'll know there's so much on this website, and I, I can't notify everybody personally. So just subscribe, and you'll find out. All right, thank you so much. Bye-bye.